a big hello to everybody here and uh, to the larger audience. Uh, so uh, my topic being sports nutrition, I think as uh, Dr. Uh, Harman Deep and Parjeet uh, uh, discussed, uh, I think very aptly said, uh, and I will also be covering a few uh, points over here. Uh, if the panelists have any questions uh, regarding uh, the role of food uh, and the impact on sports nutrition, uh, I would welcome these questions. You're on mute, Tina. Uh, Geeta, I have a question for you, um, uh, considering your profile, you're a sports nutritionist. Um, yes, can please. food actually enhance athletic performance? Um, uh, absolutely. I think uh, every athlete has uh, varied uh, needs and uh, food itself can go a long way in enhancing the performance. Uh, as with so many misconceptions and myths, uh, should I eat before workout or should I not eat at all for fat burning uh, is a very relative and a subjective question and uh, needs uh, will uh, individually have to be uh, customized uh, based on the athlete's uh, requirement and what kind of sport is the uh, person uh, involved with at all. So having adequate carbohydrate intake itself, um, sometimes even as simple as carbohydrate, a fruit, a toast, a banana before your workout can uh, prolong your workout duration. So having energy availability or adequate calories in your meals, um, you know, with uh, like uh, doctor already was talking about, uh, you know, certain problematic eating, it could be uh, sometimes in um, uh, sports where aesthetics are involved and body composition is very important and these athletes have to be you know maintaining their body weight so so eating can become a problem and energy availability is very important especially being females and if it's an adolescent or a teenager I think uh, iron deficiency the lack of uh, adequate energy itself uh, can lead to other challenges including amenorrhea loss of uh, you know bone mineral density uh, because these are crucial years when ossification occurs right in the uh, you know prime year of puberty. So uh, having adequate uh, protein intake, carbohydrates in the meals. Uh, now nitrates has uh, taken a lot of importance in uh, an athlete's meal. The fruit juice is quite popular among uh, all athletes and their uh, parent um, you know, uh, circle. So to be able to uh, look beyond beetroot, and I think there are a lot of vegetables uh, that are rich in uh, nitrate. So as simple as even uh, being able to use lettuce and parsley and rocket leaves and uh, you know turnips, carrots, in so many other ways that is possible uh, eaten raw because to be able to eat even 350, 400 grams, which is close to half kg of beetroot to get about 400, 500 mg of nitrates in uh, every day's diet daily, is uh, quite criminal. It may be uh, practically challenging. So nitrates uh, can enhance athletic uh, performance because uh, they are vasodilator, they exercise capacity and endurance increases. Uh, aptly as uh, doctors already had suggested, micronutrients as even having adequate iron in the diet. Are they vegetarians? Are they vegans? So they have the challenge of, uh, you know, these nutrients and if they are uh, uh, vegetarian to be able to have non-heme ion absorbed itself is can be very highly uh, challenging with high fiber diets oxalate there's so much nutrient nutrient interaction sometimes athletes don't realize you tell them uh, certain supplements when there's a deficiency they will couple iron and calcium they take them together or you're eating an iron rich meal like say amaranth or anything that is very rich in iron and then you also eating curd with it so calcium and iron have a similar pathways of absorption. So there's always a challenge. So uh, to be able to just play along, you know, using some basic scientific guidelines and uh, use uh, food judiciously, uh, vitamin D, uh, again, a very big challenge. So but vitamin D can have a great impact on uh, performance. Um, B12, I think doctors have already talked about, and then antioxidants. We'll also discuss then in uh, uh, the micronutrient uh, section. Uh, very important to have a meal which is varied, uh, varied with inclusion of fruits and vegetables uh, because they can kind of help maintain the free radicals and the inflammation of high athletic training or you know very tra heavy training load. Omega-3 uh, anti-inflammatory. Uh, so very important that you try and get them as much as uh, possible from food uh, and uh, very little omega-3 present in vegetarian meals. So conversion of ALA is very poor again, uh, less than 15%. Uh, water, highly uh, overlooked. So as simple as being hydrated well enough itself can go a long way in managing uh, the heat or thermal regulation and uh, to be able to prevent fatigue. So uh, enhances exercise capacity. 
and uh, electrolytes uh, as simple as just being able to have something salty before your workout or even just as simple as you don't need any dandy uh, you know electrolyte drinks or you know uh, drink mix you could just use lime sugar and salt from your home in your uh, from your kitchen or pantry and that will itself suffice in uh, being able to be a um, isotonic drink so in a just yes uh, to be able to just organize your meals before during and after can uh, really uh, improve your exercise regime thank you geeta and um, does food actually help with our body composition uh, absolutely uh, this is something that as a as a dietitian uh, we are always asked and uh, uh, food has a great impact on body weight and uh, uh, i think uh, what people over uh, see or uh, do not understand is body weight is made up of muscle mass and uh, fat percentage so uh, i think weighing yourselves every day is really not required the focus should be on adequate intake of calories and uh, at the same time not overdoing it because based on your weight loss goals if you want to lose weight uh, the focus should be on building muscle mass and that cannot be done without uh, quality proteins in uh, all the meals through the day so uh, and of course certain foods which can have a thermic effect like high protein itself uh, helps in uh, burning extra calories and keeping you satiated through the day uh, so uh, high fiber diet low gi carbohydrates uh, so food can be altered in several ways uh, like using vinegar itself can delay uh, your satiety or your hunger so uh, as a delays digestion so there are several ways food can be used uh, um and also using good quality fats uh, you know primarily uh, even if it's uh, unsaturated fats uh, but pre predominantly choosing nuts and seeds and avocados and extra virgin olive oil so these are quality uh, fats and uh, they can also uh, prevent hunger and add uh, uh, delaying of uh, you know the feeling of um, uh you know constant snacking so body composition can definitely be altered with good quality meals and well planned uh, just kind of spaced across thank you geeta and uh, do you think food can be used as uh, erogenic aids in what uh, yes. at that <laughs> yes uh, thank god that uh, the wada uh, has now uh, uh, undone uh, caffeine uh, from the banned list and uh, it's quite popular among uh, the exercise enthusiasts Uh, we have uh, caffeine which is uh, uh, you know commonly used and uh, among others so um, just to be able to have a shot of black coffee or uh, for that matter even your dark chocolate has some amount of caffeine uh, so uh, before your workout time uh, can uh, give you a bit of that metabolic stimulus and uh, as little as you know just like the caffeine content of uh, the beverage can vary based on how much of uh, the coffee powder you used or you know it really varies on the kind of drink or the coffee uh, beverage that you're choosing but as little as even you know uh, just uh, two cups of green tea which could be about uh, 50 80 mg of caffeine or uh, one half glass of uh, black coffee strong coffee could give you 100 mg of caffeine so that itself can act as an ergogenic aid and boost your uh, uh, exercise performance um and um the conversation with dr parjeet and harmandeep was can food help manage micronutrients needs and support immunity so i i i, I uh, that was lovely to uh, have them conclude uh, that food is uh, uh, the most vital way to uh, incorporate micronutrients in meals and i'll second that uh, because we know that uh, um, unnecessary and ad hoc uh, supplementation of micronutrients through multivitamin multivitamin combinations uh, may not be needed for uh, uh, people who are exercising and uh, even in uh, athletes uh, uh, these um, supplements can sometimes thwart uh, training adaptations so uh, as they actually said uh, it is best that you know uh, people who exercise and who indulge in physical activity must look at a uh, very um, good intake of fruits vegetables uh, as uh, dr already uh, mentioned there is always a challenge uh, even uh, even among us uh, that we sometimes will not be able to eat five cups of vegetables a cooked vegetable could be as simple as you know half to one kurtumi uh, and of course it is it again dairy so a salad could be a huge bowl because it's just that a lettuce 100 grams may uh, you know kind of have larger volume so to be able to just uh, choose fruits vegetables over supplements is uh, definitely uh, 
important and supplements are not needed at all and uh, you know just to have a varied diet i think is extremely important um, you know nuts and seeds pulses sprouts i think just stick to probiotics i think some something that we sometimes uh, uh, over oversee or um, over overlook rather sorry uh, we do not uh, fail to uh, include adequate fermented foods in our meals and even probiotics uh, can go a long way in uh, supporting the immune system uh, other than just antioxidants vitamins minerals that come from fruit vegetables nuts seeds uh, so uh, probiotics uh, especially when athletic training happens and the training load is very high the immunity is lowered and there's a tendency for infections to uh, creep in so uh, these can uh, very high amount of fruit vegetable intake uh, along with even probiotics can keep your immunity very high and uh, also um, uh, with covid uh, uh, i think it's imperative it goes without saying a lot of our traditional uh, spices herbs i think have come into uh, popular practice right now from uh, you know your ginger tea turmeric tea to you know all your tulsi and everything that we've used traditionally our spices you know fresh ginger garlic without being cooked of course garlic should be eaten raw so uh, i think all of these can be used uh, to keep your immunity very high um i would love to hear insights on hydration does does rehydration improve athletic performance uh, uh totally uh, totally uh if you're already starting uh, exercise in a dehydrated uh, state uh, especially also depends on which part of the country you are in uh, in colder times i think including all of us sometimes uh, we may not tend to get thirsty so uh, thirst may not necessarily always be an indicator for uh, hydration status uh, so you have to ensure that uh, you uh, are uh, catering to water needs as i already highlighted uh, just as little as 1% 2% loss of body water can make you dehydrated and uh, what uh, athletes uh, uh, fail to understand is is just water plain water that can kind of not just help thermal regulation but it delays perform uh, you know uh, tiredness or fatigue and they by actually you can prolong your exercise time just by keeping yourself uh, hydrated so adequate water intake electrolyte uh, taking just wee bit of sodium or your just salt in your nimbu pani can help you retain water prevent dehydration so whenever you work out for example if it is a 50 kg athlete you restrict to 2% uh, uh less than 2% of loss of uh, your uh, sweat or uh, body water so that will be as much as 1 kg so after you training you weigh yourself if you feel that it's you lost more weight then you immediately have to drink 1.5 times more so if you lost 1 kg you drink 1 and 1/2 liters of water and uh, uh, urine check that's one of the simple measures uh, to check your hydration status uh, if your color your the color of your urine is dark yellow that that means it's hypotonic automatically that you could be dehydrated so ensure that whenever you drink water over drinking plain water can again lead to dilution of uh, body fluids so uh, like uh, what is hyponatremia it will further cause cramping and you know a uh, lot of other issues so ensure that when you drink water and rehydrate uh, you know it's also best to add a bit of salt Uh, in your waters i'm learning so much from you geeta and uh, this comes to uh, uh, a question yeah. somebody put up yesterday can i have 6 to 7 liters of water uh, and i was like wait <laughs> let me ask geeta and i'll get back to you <laughs> uh, 6 to 7 liters see there's no thumb rule uh, previously we had something called as 8 8 to 8 which is 8 ounces water 8 glasses uh, but that is no longer uh, you know sound uh, i think water needs uh, very individual and uh, every person needs a uh, different uh, you know uh, quantities and actually it obviously has higher salt needs like when we say somebody who's uh, a healthy person may need just 1 tsp salt or somebody who's suffering from hypertension we say restrict to you know 1 tsp salt but there is an athlete who loses that amount of salt in just a very hectic training schedule Uh, so we have to we have to cater to every needs uh, is the athlete uh, playing a sport which is outdoor you know is it football is it cricket you know uh, is the child also playing something like badminton indoor uh, because the courts can get very warm you know or is it a focus oriented game like you know shooting or, so it, every sport has different needs and i think it needs to be definitely customized great great i, I have a question i'm sorry i'm interrupting i have a question can i yes yeah, sure sure please Uh, few days back, uh, there was a Netflix series, uh, you know, on uh, plan plan based diet. I I I wanted to make sure to ask this question because otherwise uh, our interaction would be you know kind of incomplete. So what's what's your idea about uh, 
that thought okay. not not exactly about that series about that thought yeah about going vegan uh, i'm glad you brought this up prashna because i think it was a quite an uproar and we had a lot of a storm that was kicked up by uh, this entire uh, um, documentary or whatever you call it uh, but uh, i think it received a lot of flack from the scientific fraternity uh, even the what little evidences were suggested were totally warped and uh, if you ask me my personal opinion uh, i have vegetarian athletes uh and sometimes even the parents are more involved with the sport than the child itself uh and all children below 18 are mandatorily counseled and their hand holding happens only in the presence of the parent so uh the parents will ask should my child be eating chicken should my child eat eggs we have even vegetarian athletes who do not eat eggs so uh the first question they ask is uh, there's a lot of pressure from the coach uh, should uh, the child be eating non veg Uh, so the first question i asked the child because not even the parent i asked the child because the child is the athlete and uh, uh, it's only being rightful to ask the child do you want to eat chicken okay when the child says no i think even see as a dietitian what are we here to do as a sports nutritionist you have to cater to a certain amount of protein a certain amount of calories very scientifically and you are only there to facilitate and guide them based on what the cultural family needs and meal choices are you know so my personal thing is if i've had a uh, national level uh, players who are vegetarians and uh, don't even eat egg and they're doing well they're national level uh, athletes so we are there only to cater to their needs and meals can be planned in quality and quantity based on what their personal preferences are so uh, apart this documentary uh, i think we are vegetarians strictly at home and uh, uh, though i do occasionally eat uh, sometimes uh, outside but uh, i think food choice is very personal uh, there is no science to say uh, be vegetarian or be vegan or be non vegetarian uh, as long as uh, it it uh, it suits your uh, integrity and your needs so how some of them turn vegans for ethical reasons and uh, then we kind of educate them and say there are nutritional deficiencies and challenges uh, as doctors had already highlighted b12 vitamin d omega 3 uh, iron because uh, heme iron iron from eggs and non veg is absorbed far more easily uh, so there are challenges where there's deficiency so if we educate them and kind of guide them to do these tests uh, like ferritin hemoglobin and vitamin d and we accordingly then sensitize them to the need of supplementation which is very ethical and we guide them the, the proper protocol on what should be uh, the dosage um, and uh, how long would you take that would that be a daily dose a minimum dose loading dose maintenance dose and then you kind of educate them and kind of uh, you know take them through this counseling to uh, to be able to manage their health and overall wellness accordingly thank you but i hope that answers your question and definitely <laughs> thank you so it's a privilege to have you geeta senior and we're learning so much uh, so what thank role, you. what role does uh, food plain fueling um uh, and recovery absolutely uh, so a lot of uh, the first thing athletes ask is uh, should we uh, eat before we work out or should we uh, work out on empty stomach so the first thing we ask them is what is your body fat composition are you looking at fat loss what is your fat percentage is it be really, uh, uh, deviated from uh, the recommended or the, the basic range there all we ask them will you be open to trying uh, training low which is only fast at stage adaptations they bump up so uh, just because somebody is on any stuff doesn't mean that you also need to work out on any stuff so it really and, and many things you know you uh, they get tired uh, some of them they got hungry and you have to be able to introduce food into them as they get up or just off the bed so and they do better with some food you know after eating and eating can uh, kind of uh, give you some energy and can help you increase the duration of your workout so uh, definitely i think it's very very again uh, subjective to uh, what the athlete needs or in terms of body composition changes and is the athlete will and also sometimes when they are deficient sometimes they are anemic or they are vegetarian there's a b12 vitamin d is low recovery is not optimal and energy levels are low they are tired and if you kind of not give them a basic thing it's like expecting the car to not become petrol so i think a little, a little bit of uh, food uh, they tend to exercise better definitely with recovery Uh, as i already uh, 
for me it was uh, you know I mentioned earlier the optimal levels of high carbohydrate high protein high quality and high uh, of quick absorbing uh, you know uh, proteins are needed uh, like you know hot chocolate is quite popular there very a lot of uh, uh, you know evidences or some scientific papers have been written on how milk or dairy is quite um, fruitful or uh, a good choice for these uh, uh, exercise enthusiasts because it has leucine now uh, among all the uh, branched amino acids or essential amino acids uh, leucine uh, is a very very crucial amino acid that can increase muscle protein synthesis so uh, if you are not able to spend uh, exorbitant money on whey protein or any protein supplements you do not need something um, uh, expensive but as simple as being able to have the milk itself uh, is uh, quite convenient and effective in order to increase your muscle mass immediately after workout due to its leucine content and also um, because it has quality proteins so and uh, of course certain other foods uh, be pomegranate tart cherries and uh, omega 3 uh, also helps in controlling inflammation of exercise so a lot of foods can be introduced into meals um, to enhance uh, recovery process great um geeta i would uh, i would take an opportunity and ask you this uh, what would you be your um, three suggestions for somebody uh, like me um, who's probably working out going for a walk or or probably trying to be a marathon runner probably Uh, so what would be your three suggestions uh, when it comes to rehydration and and fueling recovery nutrients okay. just for a person like me okay who doesn't uh, move at all <laughs> uh, so the first suggestion would be move more okay thank you <laughs> taken uh, taken accepted <laughs> second suggestion would be uh, start small okay uh, rome was not built in a day Right. so uh, as i tell all my athletes the first thing we and and come with a open mind that's something we also have to deal with all the time as uh, dietitians and nutritionists they read a lot on internet on google and they know sometimes more than you and the first request we tell them is uh, with all humility we tell them please come to be ready to unlearn there's a lot of unlearning first then there's education and relearning you know do i eat egg yolks do i have to eat ghee will i eat white rice and believe me all of these are myths right you know and and uh, i think uh, except for my gray i think otherwise i'm doing okay for my age absolutely you look wonderful <laughs> and uh, thank you so much uh, no what i'm trying to say there are a lot of misconceptions and you know uh, hearsay so there's no scientific evidence to that and uh, there is also no one size fits all so it's it's uh, uh, very very flexible and uh, i think is like i suggested we start small and you do not need um, you know a very um, exorbitantly expensive supplements to begin with uh, we also notice some athletes just because another athlete is having something well he gets something in a bottle i know i see him drinking i think that's the reason he is winning medals so there's always curiosity as to what somebody else is doing and they want to aim and copy that so i think uh, uh, there is uh, for all you know he may be just drinking water so uh, you know and uh, we we overlook basics so start small have a very um, simple strategic solution uh, to achievable goals uh, you don't need to go out of your way and spend a lot of money to be fit uh, though i've always i've had access to a gym i've worked for a gym a gym before i've never worked out in a gymnasium so uh, you don't need um, fancy equipments you could use your own body weight exercise calisthenics do yoga they are also weight bearing exercise Uh, to be able to you know work against your own body weight you know as simple as surya namaskar so uh, start small keep it simple and uh, be very practical uh, don't be obsessed with weight because weight is all about you know what body weight, uh, water itself is 60 70% water so in addition there's the lean body mass lean body mass is again your muscle mass your organ weight your bone weight you know uh, you not evacuated and you not uh, you know uh, uh, gone to the toilet you're going to weigh half kg more so or you're menstruating or you have premenstrual uh, syndrome you are going to have some water retention and more body weight so don't focus on body weight but focus rather on how you feel your uh, stamina your sense of well being your immunity um, do you fall sick uh, do you and um, how do your clothes fit you you know uh, they are they are you know just inch measurements over your body they are far more uh, uh, measurable and tangible uh, yardstick to weight 
I I wanted to uh, say something, Gita. I just love the flow in which you know you presented the things one after the other. Uh, the way they should be presented, you know, step one, step two. It was really very very nice listening to you. Thank you, Nidhi. Very happy. So, very happy to so, uh, Gita, would you like to share a case study or a presentation with us? Would you? Uh, like yes, please. That uh, if we have the time, I would very quickly go over. Right. So uh, you could ask. Yes, Zia. please. Uh, Zia, would it be possible for you to share the slides, please? Thank you. Yes. Uh, next one, please. Uh, uh, some of these I have already discussed, uh, but very quickly to go over uh, in terms of uh, uh, the focus on a female athlete, uh, I've already talked of uh, um, uh, certain deficiencies. And uh, here, if you see uh, the child, uh, I'm not sure which case, uh, I mean, which athlete I'm referring to here because of uh, confidentiality and uh, anonymity. Uh, so there is common illness, which is uh, cold, respiratory issues, uh, wheezing, uh, upper respiratory tract infection, uh, and uh, there's poor recovery. So obviously after intense training, there is muscle pain or delayed onset uh, muscle soreness. Uh, so what do we do here? The first thing we do is based on a, a biochemistry parameter, which is your blood test. Uh, you look at uh, supplementing uh, due to the nutritional deficiency. So uh, it could be uh, vitamin uh, D3 and um, based on when the athlete needs magnesium. So if, if there is uh, a higher training load, uh, definitely magnesium helps uh, and it's a muscle relaxant. So uh, there is um, because uh, training, uh, these athletes have uh, two or three sessions of training a day sometimes and it could be three, four hours. So uh, with when, when we are very sore after very uh, high intense uh, strength training, uh, it's very difficult for them to be up again next morning, be five or, you know, as early as that and back to training again. So uh, these nutrients can really uh, help and enhance recovery. So the minute you take care of these nutrients, so you automatically in the coming months will notice that there is um, uh, improvement in the immunity. Uh, definitely, they do not fall sick as often. Uh, commonly, the cold and upper respiratory tract infection. Uh, definitely, I think there is a correlation uh, with the vitamin D3 in growing children. Uh, so the minute you, because calcium is going to be uh, maintained through homeostasis, absorption from the gut and release from the bones, right? Because of your parathormone and, you know, your basic hormones that maintain. So actually, uh, it's, uh, I find that uh, quite a paradox that uh, calcium tests are even done as an athlete uh, routine uh, profile because calcium is going to anyway remain normal because the way uh, the body maintains its uh, because it has so many important functions, not just bone and teeth, uh, muscle contraction itself is due to calcium. So you will automatically notice when there is uh, adequate D3, uh, these uh, teenagers definitely tend to grow taller in the coming months. And um, uh, yes, immunity definitely goes up and uh, they, they're uh, definitely feeling better in their mind because uh, sometimes uh, when they are kind of uh, a bit weepy and uh, you know or moody uh, they, they definitely tend to uh, feel good in their brain because of vitamin D, uh, D3. Yes next one please. Uh, so commonly again here uh, this was a, a, a teenager a girl and uh, a common complaint was the child would be always fighting with the parents. Uh, a single child and uh, the parents adore her. Uh, but always very tired, unable to uh, uh, participate in uh, training, uh, quite irritable. Uh, that was one of her, um, uh, you know, highlighted uh, symptoms. Uh, so we took care of it through uh, not, and, and of course, uh, if they're non-vegetarian, it's great. You can use eggs and uh, liver and so many other rich sources of uh, iron, uh, even chicken or red meat. Uh, we also added a dietary supplement as iron and um, sometimes even better with vitamin C uh, for absorption. So, and then you notice that the training improves, the stamina goes up and definitely uh, is better in terms of the mood also. Huh? So I think uh, anemia uh, can be addressed through diet and supplements. Next one, please. Uh, yes, and this is something that is uh, uh, not given importance in uh, many uh, homes. Uh, the child, uh, is in school or college and uh, they have trainings typically in the morning and uh, evening. Uh, then they have uh, additionally sometimes tuitions, homework, and uh, they are uh, at 
the training center till seven or eight. Then they need to have a shower, be home, finish their academic commitments. And uh, invariably, uh, there is no time to sleep because they have a very early morning training schedule before they get to school. So I think um, what parents do not understand is uh, there has to be a rest day and uh, overtraining can uh, be equally bad. Uh, so allowing uh, the muscle and uh, even mentally uh, for the child or the uh, uh, these teenagers to recoup is extremely important. So the minute you take care of adequate rest, uh, focus on sleep, um, definitely be uh, able to address sleep debt. And uh, because every time they're not sleeping one, two hours daily and kind of it adds, sums up and can be very challenging and the growth gets retarded and um, you know their, their immunity falls so uh, this is something that is often um, the challenge among most of these professional players so you kind of address that uh, and uh, kind of uh, taper their training load a bit and, and ensure that they have adequate one or two rest days or maybe the morning training session gets shifted to the evening you automatically notice that they start doing better something very simple but uh, very effective and of course, uh, with ghrelin and leptin, the sleep hormones. So the minute you look at uh, reducing the ghrelin, so the, when you sleep sound and you have better rec recovery and you rejuvenate it, so body composition or weight itself also improves. Next one, please. Uh, I think I've talked enough on rest and uh, recovery, adequate energy uh, availability that is to be able to eat adequate itself. And sometimes uh, it's a red, a red flag when you see teenagers not able to eat well. So you have to also, I think, as, uh, as a coach uh, and uh, work with the parents and ensure that, you know, you cater to some of the meals which they like and uh, also be sensitive to the, the ones that they do not like because the, the appearances can uh, uh, kind of really put them off. Uh, sometimes either the fruit is not cut well or the fruit doesn't look appealing and we, we hear all kinds of uh, uh, complaints from these uh, teenagers. So, um, I, yeah, I think adults are far more easier that way. But yeah, with, with some of these growing adolescents, we have some very specific uh, complaints. So uh, to be able to plan protein through the entire day and um, definitely overtraining can be uh, very bad and uh, uh, you need to have a fine balance between rest. Otherwise, there can be challenges, as I already pointed out, that uh, there are menstrual dis disturbances and uh, estrogen has uh, a uh, uh, influence on uh, bone mineral density. So uh, it, it's it's a vicious cycle and uh, commonly known as the female athlete triad. So you have to ensure that they eat well and are rested to have adequate menstruation. Uh, and not only estrogen protects the heart, it protects the bones too. Next please. Yes. 